Organizational skills, an executive function that can help bring order to chaos, making seemingly complicated tasks much more simple to handle. For some, this skill might not come so easily, but like all executive functions and social skills, it can be taught. I'm Steven from Toastamac, and for today's autism video, I'm going to explain why organizational skills might be difficult for some people, the importance of setting up a routine, and I'll share a few examples on how to improve said organizational skills. There is something I want you to keep in mind as we're going over this topic. Organizational skills are not always correlated to an individual's level of intelligence or their long-term memory. Even a straight-A student in grade school can still struggle with keeping everything neat and tidy. No, the main factor to consider when it comes to organizational skills is the ability to filter and process information. An ability that some autistic people, myself included, may struggle with sometimes. Only by filtering and processing what is given to us can the organization truly begin. Let me give you an example to illustrate this point. I'm about to give you a lot of information right now. Hey, can you get the Could dishes done? Could you do me done? a favor and take Have the you trash out? Your homework Don't forget, yet? you got a Could recital you make time tomorrow. To clean your room? Not so easy, is it? Without filtering, it can be overwhelming to try to process any of this, let alone get anything done. So when we are able to take a moment to filter and process everything, then we can start getting into the what, when, where, how, and why. Regardless of if it takes one day or more, filtering and processing can break everything down into smaller parts, thus making the tasks easier to get done. Much like if you're going out to eat lunch, you don't just shove the whole meal down your throat all at once, at least I certainly hope you don't. You take it one bite at a time, one piece at a time, until it is all done. So now that we've gone over filtering and processing, we can start going into how to improve your organizational skills. Preparatory to me giving you examples though, I should let you know about a little something called routines. Routines are a sequence of actions that are followed regularly. This can be bread and butter for many autistic people as it helps list everything out, sets up a rhythm, and makes sure that no tasks or items go unnoticed. When you get out of bed, eat breakfast, brush your teeth, get your supplies, and head on out to your destination, that's a routine. When you arrive at your destination, complete tasks, eat lunch, hang out with friends, go home, that's a routine. When you go home, eat dinner, brush your teeth, get things ready for tomorrow, and go to sleep, guess what? That's a routine. Routines are essential tools for organizational skills that when followed consistently can guarantee good results. With that said and done, it's time to get into those juicy examples I promised you. Let's start off with something small first, like a backpack. Backpacks usually contain multiple pouches and pockets to fit materials in. And while you can fit just about anything anywhere, there is a more efficient way to use the space. For example, one of the bigger pouches can hold your textbooks, the other big pouch can hold your notebooks and papers, and if you're in the college level, there are some backpacks with little pouches for your laptop specifically. There are also side pockets for your pens, pencils, erasers, and water bottles, and the frontmost pouches can hold your pencil boxes, calculators, and even snacks. By assigning which materials go to which pouch, you can always make sure of what you have at all times and never lose sight of your supplies ever again. Going one step further, let's take a look at your immediate surroundings, like, oh, say, your room. Come on, admit it. We've all had a messy room at some point in our lives and probably had at least one moment where we step on something and go, ow, 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 my foot, what was that there? There's an easy way to avoid this. Your room will most likely have cabinets, closets, and drawers, so much like the pouches in your backpack, use them efficiently. For instance, one drawer can hold important documents, another drawer can hold electronics, another drawer can hold toys, and another drawer can hold other important items. 
In terms of your clothings for your closet, you can hang shirts on one side, you can hang pants on the other side, your shelves can have your underwear, socks, and whatever other accessories you wear, and if you got enough room, throw a laundry bin in there while you're at it for your dirty clothes. If you do this right, everything will have their own respective place. So when you're done with a certain item, you just put it back in the right spot. That way you can avoid a big mess before it begins. And if you are in the process of cleaning a messy room, here's my advice. Make a game out of it. If you think about it, games usually have a series of tasks that need to get done to win the game, and they usually follow some sort of rhythm. In other words, they're another form of a routine. Like when I was a kid, what I would do is play I Spy and go, I spy with my little eye something that needs to go there, or I spy with my little eye a piece of clothing that needs to go there. So make a game out of cleaning your room. Break everything down into smaller tasks, and soon, you might find that you're cleaning your room faster than you might think. The last example I have for you might be a little bit tricky, as it involves scheduling tasks on a calendar, whether it be due dates for homeworks, classworks, projects, and upcoming events. The reason I say this one's a little tricky is because not only does this require organizational skills, it also requires time management. We'll go over the latter in the next autism video, but for now, just go ahead and list out all the tasks that need to get done, be it either in a week or in a month. From there, you'll want to prioritize which tasks need to get done right away and which tasks can be saved for last. For example, if you're in grade school and you got homework to do, you might want to do that one first and foremost, so you don't have to worry about it later on in the week. Or if you got chores around the house, maybe have that as a top priority, or second top priority if you have school homework and stuff like that. Now, for hobbies like video games and watching TV or stuff on the internet, honestly, you could do that anytime, so that might want to be saved for last. Once you got the priorities taken care of, look at your current schedule and figure out where in the schedule you can make the time for completing the tasks. Mind you, this could mean that you have to make minor changes to your existing schedule sometimes, but I'm sure you'll agree with me when I say that dealing with this is a lot more preferable than trying to juggle everything at one time. Remember, filter, process, organize. And there you have it, a basic rundown on how to improve your organizational skills. Of course, these are just basic examples, and there may be different scenarios that you may need some help with. So, if you have any questions about how to improve organizational skills, or if you want to share your examples on how you do well in organizational skills, let us know in the comments section below. On that note, it's time to end the video. Thank you very much for watching, everybody. If you enjoy what you see, consider subscribing to Toastamac and clicking the bell icon to stay up to date in our latest videos. Also, mark your calendars on Sunday, March 26, as we have a very special live stream on that day starting at noon. Just head over to Twitch and click the follow button, and you'll know once we've started. Until the next video, see you later.